Hi, my name is Jack Black, and to me, family is unconditional love. Hello, and welcome to We Are Family. I'm your host, Julia Dennison, and today I'm joined by a true force of nature in comedy, film, music, and more. He is the hilarious star of films like School of Rock, Nacho Libre, and the Kung Fu Panda series, of which there's a brand new chapter coming out this summer. Once again, here tell of Poe. Revered in all of China for his bodacious skills. It's the Dragon Master. Skadoosh! He's also one half of the comedic rock duo Tenacious D. He's got his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But most of all, as he'll likely tell you, he's a dad. But seriously, how does a dad get all this energy? I'm hoping that we can find out today. I am so thrilled to welcome the one and only Jack Black to this episode of We Are Family. So because we're parents, I always like to start with talking a little bit about our own upbringings and how they influence the way we parent. What was your childhood like? Were you introduced to creativity really early? Did comedy come naturally to you? Were you always trying to entertain your family and friends? What was it like? When I think back to my childhood, uh, my parents were both full-time aerospace engineers. So it was a little unconventional. They were real progressive. They, they never really told me no. There wasn't a lot of discipline. There was more just sort of 60s era, free thinking, new age kind of upbringing, which had its advantages and disadvantages. It's a little chaotic, but uh, it was also a lot of fun. And uh, I was able to express myself and my creativity in uh in cool ways did you feel like when you became a dad were you conscious of the fact that you wanted to parent exactly the same differently or or sort of a combination middle ground (laughs) i wanted to do some things a little differently my parents uh were really interesting in their tastes and music and stuff and and uh they had a fun sense of adventure but um they also argued a lot and and I wanted to have a little more of a peaceful place for for our kids to to grow up, uh, and I think we've done that pretty. Yeah, well. that, that's fair enough. I feel like you don't yeah. want to burden your kids too much with all yeah. the emotions while also kind of showing them your how to have emotions. It's a, it's that exactly. balance. When I yeah. was a kid, my dad would say that his dad had a bad temper, and he did he he never wanted that to to carry over into my childhood so he did you know raise me differently than his dad did i had a great childhood no complaints but there there are a couple things that i'd like to be a little different i think that's natural i think all parents are like take the good and 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 try to avoid the the pitfalls that their parents might have fallen into yeah so obviously everyone loves you from the incredible film school of rock but i think you weren't a parent yet when you filmed that right did you feel like it gave you a little taste of fatherhood when you're acting with all those elementary school kids? Oh or my God. Did it make you want to be a dad really, or like? <laughs> at that point, no. At that point, I was like, I'm not having kids. I'm not getting married and having kids. That that That's not for me. And I was very intimidated by the kids. I was like, I don't know if I can work with kids. Then once we got on the set and we had our first read through with the cast, I was like, this is magical. This is going to work. You know, we were all on the same team and, uh, and I was like, what was I afraid of? I was born for this role because I'm like a kid. You know, I, it <laughs> right. was a kind of a revelation. And I was really glad it was a good lesson. in you know, taking the plunge just because you're afraid of a thing doesn't mean it's not going to be a great thing. It was like the best thing in my career. Totally. And I feel like we as adults, there's this hierarchy that like we know more than kids. But then so often I feel like we're taught lessons by kids and often they know more than we do in a lot of things. Was there anything from that movie that you felt like the kids taught you? Just the spirit of fun and um, just the energy on the set where like in between the takes when the kids were just hanging out and laughing and horsing around. And yeah, it was more of a of an energy than it was about specific like lessons or Yes. Things like that. Just have just to have more fun, I suppose. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, because when you go into a production, when you're making a movie or putting on a show, there's a bond there that's like, because it's a scary job. You, it, it, 
when that camera is rolling and it's your time to say your lines, it takes a lot of courage to be able to face your inner demons and the terror of the moment. <laughs> For sure. So yeah. We'll always have that. And to this day, we, we, uh, we, we have that, that awesome experience in common and we look forward to our reunions. We got a 20 year reunion coming up next year. Okay. That so is we're blowing looking my forward mind. to that. Oh yeah. my God. That we're is so awesome. For life. <laughs> of course it is a family, right? And then we talk a lot about that on the podcast. Your family is not often, not always your biological family. So Kung Fu Panda, the Dragon Knight as parents, we obviously love a Netflix series. So we're so excited to have that come to Netflix on July 14th. Can you tell us what, if there's any kind of like favorite storylines or good lessons to parents who want to tee it up for their kids on Netflix? Well, a cool thing about this one is it ups the stakes uh, from the movies, the movies, all three of them all took place in China and had, you know, these adventures and, and journeys that, that were local to China. This time it kind of broadens and it's more of a global story. And the arc takes place over the course of, uh, you know, a lot more episodes. I could save China. That would be a perfect way for me to regain my title. Blade, let's ride. There's a new character, this really strong woman character who comes from England. And she's uh, played by Rita Ora brilliantly. And she's, uh, she's a knight and she's mysterious and she has secrets. And, um, and the plot thickens throughout the course of the series. And she has highs and lows emotionally. And she's got a lot of personal growth. She's in a way, the heart and soul of the show. And it was really cool to to share the the journey with her. I That's think, awesome. I think people are gonna love it. Yay! I'm so excited. So think about music. You're obviously a bona fide rock star, and you know your wife oh. Tanya Hayden is. Yes, you are. And your wife Tanya Hayden is like you know music royalty. What was music like for your own family with your kids growing up? Do you have any favorite bands you'd watch together or listen together? And did you have any kind of like movies about music that you love to watch together, obviously, besides your own? Yeah, we like to jam out a lot and listen to music and dance around to music a lot when when the boys were younger in their single digits. But now that they're teenagers, they they can't stand my musical taste. And they are always just headphones and not even letting me hear what they're listening to. But oh <laughs> back in the day, yeah, there was a lot of dancing around to Weezer. Uh, that was probably our favorite. I but, love that. Uh, <laughs> any any tips on parenting up. teens? Because we just interviewed Michael Ian Black for this podcast, and he's got teens, and he has, he said that you can see a lot of their toddler in them. Yes. Um, do you feel like oh do you feel like God. you see a lot of them as like is it like revisiting them as babies? <laughs> I mean, look, we have fun adventures, but it gets harder and harder to get quality time with the kids as they get older because it's it's just like I'm not a kid anymore. I don't want to do that kid stuff anymore. And you're like, oh, no, but no, still be my kid. We can still go to Disneyland, can't we? No, it's not cool anymore. Oh, but that's just part of growing up, right? It's uh -huh. like uh, you got to you gotta let them leave the nest. You it's, do. It's painful, and but it's, it's what's important. I get it. We talk about that a lot on the podcast. You got to just be there for them, even if it's not always easy. And that is parenthood. Jack Black, thank you so much for coming on We Are Family. This has been so great to chat. Thank you. Take care. I got all my sisters and me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to follow We Are Family on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen so you don't miss an episode. And we'd love your feedback. If you could rate this podcast and leave us a review, we'd really appreciate it. You can also find us online at parents.com slash We Are Family Podcast. Tune in to all our episodes during this season with Michael Ian Black, Phil Rosenthal, and Tamara Mowry Housley. And if you missed any of our previous episodes in seasons one and two, they're waiting for you right now. This season of We Are Family is presented by me, Julia Dennison, and produced by Jim Hankey. Editing is by Jason Mack. And thanks also to our production team at Pod People, Rachel King, Matt Sav, and Danielle Roth. <laughs>